Hey everyone, before we jump into this video, I want to apologize for my terrible mic quality as well as my terrible English. This is the first time I do, so I apologize in advance for that. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit this ordinary zoo image into this fine art picture. So let's get started. So first of all, what I'm going to do is crop the image. I think a one-to-one -one crop will work pretty good on this particular image. So you can see here there's a lot of distractions, like another lion, this terrible wall, a blurry bush. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop as much of this other stuff out while still getting his face. So let's see what we can do here. We don't have to make it perfectly. As you can see, there's still this bush, but if I'm gonna crop this out, I'm gonna end up with a terrible crop, so I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is just find a nice composition, maybe a little bit more hair. Alright, so let's start working here. First of all, I'm definitely gonna edit this in black and white, since I know I want it in black and white. It just looks way better in black and white. The color does not give the picture justice at all. So let's get started here. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down the blacks, holding down the Alt key to see where the black points clip, and just releasing and seeing what looks good. I think that looks pretty good. Then what I'm gonna do is bring down the highlights actually all the way, 100%. You see how much detail they're suddenly unveiled? It's not that much, but later it's gonna get in handy very nicely. Alright, so what I'm gonna do next is play around with the clarity. So I like what the clarity does to the hair, but I don't like it what it does to the face itself of the line. So I'm gonna actually make a mask here. Bit of a white feather. Just and just mask everything around the line. Around around the face itself. I'm gonna press the I'm gonna press the O key here to see what I've selected, what is in my mask. It doesn't have to be perfect can clip a little bit. Then I'm gonna press the ALT key to get rid of everything I've selected on the, fa on the face that I don't want selected. Alright, so I'm gonna press the O key again so the mask doesn't show the red anymore. And now I can increase clarity here. And you see what beautiful effect it has to the hair outside of the face. So let's just see. I actually think 100 works pretty well here. Yeah, definitely. And also contrast. Contrast works perfectly here. Let's see how much I want to add. Actually, I think I'm going to add 100 here as well. Could play around with the other settings. Maybe turn down the shadows just a little bit to give a m bit more dramatic look. Play around with the highlights. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna return. So one thing is I've shot this image through a window at the zoo at an angle. So it's not perfect sharpness. So I'm actually gonna sharpen it quite a bit here. Let's just see in the one-to-one -one perspective how much I'm here like all the way. Actually, I think this is one of the few pictures I'm gonna sharpen 150% here. It looks pretty much, yeah, it definitely looks better 100 at 150% than at like 80 from outside. And that's from the uncropped version and that's what I'm gonna be displaying so I'm gonna be concentrating on that alright so not too bad I'm not gonna mask at all because 
pretty much everything I want sharpened. If I'm gonna mask here, I'm just gonna lose some of the sharpness in the face. And I'm not too worried about the noise in the corners. So I'm not gonna mask anything. Noise reduction. Don't need that. Adds away a little bit of clarity and sharpness. So definitely don't want that color. Don't need that here. I'm gonna enable lens profile correction. I shot this with a Canon 400mm f5.6 but, but for some reason Lightroom doesn't have the profile for that lens so it just uses the 400 f2.8 which is close enough. So let's see here. I like to turn down the vignetting after the lens profile correction just because I like the little bit of vignetting. It's really not that much here. So, yeah. Chromatic aberration, nothing I, I'm gonna be worrying about on black and white. Now, vignetting will work very good on this image to bring just the attention to the center of the frame. So I'm gonna try here actually quite a lot of vignetting to see what works best. I think actually this works pretty well. Around 24. I'm gonna change around the midpoint slightly. I like the default way here. So I'm gonna reset the midpoint. Alright. So down here is all color stuff. Not gonna worry about that. Grain. Not gonna add any grain. So we're back up here. So I'm actually gonna try out the whites. But this just makes the image way too bright. Actually, I like it. On default, the whites, but what I'm gonna do is bring up the highlights. So just the very highlights of the image get a little bit brighter and it adds a little bit more dynamic to the image. Then I'm gonna just play around with the other settings don't like any of the lights. Let's see if the darks do anything. Actually don't like the darks either. Shadows. Nope. That's too dark. Actually gonna raise it just a little bit. So yeah, we actually just got pretty much a good look. I might add a little bit of clarity to the total image. Just a little bit. Alright. Shadows. Actually, I don't like the look the shadows give when I put them up on the entire image. I like, however, what they do to the eyes. So I'm gonna reset them here, and I'm gonna add a brush, a feather, not that much, and I'm just gonna add a mask, a brush, to the eyes, and bring up the shadows. Perfect. So you can see here, the lion just looked up, so you can't even see his eyeball. But here, we have a perfect eyeball. So what I'm gonna do here, is gonna activate Frankenstein mode. I'm gonna select the spot removal tool. I'm gonna go to the eye with the clear ball. I'm gonna look what size it is. I'm not gonna click anything yet. I'm gonna go to the other eye. I'm gonna click here and automatically it's gonna select something that's gonna fit the eye and everything around it as well as possible but I don't want that so I'm gonna actually drag this to the other black point on his eye and voila we already have a lion with two real nice eyeballs right now so you can see the other the old one is still there a little bit so I'm going to remove that. Let's see how it does perfectly. So let's see. It actually looks a bit weird because the one eyeball is so far up. So what I'm going to do here is zoom in again. Take this and just drag it a little bit on top. Let's see how this looks again. Still could li use a little bit more. So let's see how that works. Alright, so that works pretty well. Alright, so we're almost done. But what's missing is some vignetting. We've already added vignetting in the vignetting tool. 
but now what I want is to make all of this distractive stuff black so it's just the line and his hair so I'm gonna select a bit of a big feather on the normal adjustment brush tool I'm gonna lower the exposure quite a bit two stops and I'm just gonna brush everything a way that I want in the picture. On zoo shots generally you wanna shoot pretty tight because unlike in nature you don't have the nice background you often have people and fences so of course you don't want that and that also is a great way to get rid of all those distractions just by simply adding some vignetting. I'm just gonna see now minus two stops works great for everything down here but up here we can still see some details I'm gonna actually add a new brush minus one and I'm gonna paint just where I still can see the background here again Now I actually don't want this too much because I still want a little bit just a shadow of the background so it doesn't look totally unnatural so let's see here so yeah I think this works pretty good but what we have is like almost a bit too much darkness here on the edges so I'm actually gonna select a new brush and I'm gonna erase the shadows and just brush over it now the great thing is even if you don't have Lightroom you can still do this pretty much with every other editing tool you just have to do it their way so yeah we're almost done actually here we could use still a little bit more vignetting alright so let's see the before and after this is the before The regular zoo image, nothing special. I personally, I delete it if it would stay like this. But thanks to editing software, we now have this amazing gallery shot. Isn't that amazing? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like to see more videos like that, as well as a one-year photography tour throughout all of Europe that I'm going to be going on next year. Leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below, I'm gonna reply to all of them. Like the video and have an amazing day.